American Water Polo. Hi, this is Damon Newman from American Water Polo, and we're here today at the Profile of Club Cincinnati Marlins. Um, with we're sitting down here with Coach uh, Nick Helwig. I don't see how he's been doing lately. How you doing, Nick? Doing good. You know, just hanging out the best you can in lockdown. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right. We're we're day and age. We're we're doing our best here. Uh, so tell me a little bit about your club. Um, where you guys are located, the mission, and uh, you know, you know, some things that we can learn about. Yeah, so uh, the Marlins Water Polo Program uh, actually started back in the 1970s. Okay. Um, and awesome. hosted a, hosted a national tournament back then. Uh, we found a picture. Um, I mean, I, the uh, old school picture, and it was a girls national tournament held at the pool we practice at. Um, and then as swimming kind of exploded in Ohio, the water polo side kind of fell off a bit. Um, and then I would say eight years ago ish, uh, Mike Roberts kind of revitalized the program, kind of got the, the Marlins back up again. So that way his high school program, he coached at St. X, um, he really wanted to kind of work with those guys a little more. So he began working with those ones. And then a couple of years ago, uh, I moved over from running moose water polo to, uh, working with the Marlins, um, you know, running everything on your own, the finances, all that stuff was just kind of getting too much for me. So I wanted to, to get with a, a group and the idea was to kind of merge, uh, you know, my, my coaching ideas and, and the group of kids I've been working with, uh, with the Marlins swimming program and kind of really help build up that from there. Um, and the idea for Marlins is really just, you know, getting people involved and, and getting younger kids playing. Uh, you know, we've run a, a, a really successful 14 under program that's had, you know, spring, summer and fall, at least 15 to 16 kids. I know it's not big. We talked to like Chicago and they've got like 400 14 unders, but for our area, it's, it's kind of nice seeing that many kids playing at such a young age. I think we had a nine year old playing uh, with us last spring and fall. So that was kind of uh, fun to see, but really just getting people involved. Uh, we've really paired with a new high school program. Walnut Hills has uh, jumped on uh, with us. And so it's been kind of good to see, all that happening and, and getting those new players and new schools involved and just getting some kids some coaching opportunity as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Well, you know, there's a, like a rich, like you said, there's a, you know, rich tradition of aquatics and, and, and the Marlins have been around for, like you said, a number of years. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's only a matter of time before, you know, the, you know, you reestablish yourself. And I think that that's something that's um, obviously to look forward to. Yeah. I'm surprised more swim programs haven't done that. You know, you get the kids that you're, you're you know, obviously you're not going to snag your, your top level swimmers that are going, you know, on the top right. of the team to swim, but those kids that might burn out because they're, you know, you know, lane burnout, the black line fatigue and get them, well, okay, well, we'll play some water polo here and then swim as well. Like combining those two, you can kind of pull from both programs. And so these big sw swim programs in Ohio is, in other places i'm not sure why they don't kind of add on to that yeah yeah well you know it, it certainly takes some um uh some some progressive thinking you know people with a you know open mind and, and, and a way to look at things to, to benefit both uh, you know both you know the entire aquatics program as a whole right yeah so, I, I know one of the concerns they had originally was you know water pool costing money i mean the way we've always funded it is we basically fund ourselves you make sure you make your budget and if you don't go on the red then then you're successful so it's only right. adding to that so if you have the business minded people on board it's like well, budget out what you need to do then there's there's no problem with that yeah well hopefully we can see some more things like that occur in other places you know you know throughout ohio as well as throughout the country that would be that would be ideal yeah so tell me, um, you know, what have you been doing lately to keep yourself busy? You know, you know, take me through your day as as, as, a, as a teacher and a parent and all that kind of fun stuff, right? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, my morning starts early. The our high school actually went to a block schedule, so their classes don't start till nine twenty. Okay. Um, but I I get up. I mean, well, my son helps wake me up at like six forty five religiously. He's an alarm clock. <laughs> um, but I'll get up and you know I I try to get myself ready for the day. Uh, I send a message out to my students uh, via text message on Google Classroom every day on here's what we're doing, here's where you should be at. Um, I give them a fun fact, like history class, I'll give them a, a this day in history or my psych kids, I'm giving them, like we're talking about census, so I'm giving them a, a sense fact every day. So 
um, you know, whether they think about it or not, they're actually learning at least one fact a day. Um, and, you know, and then I get involved. And so on some days I'm on the computer video chatting with the, the kids from, uh, you know, 920 till 220. Or some days I'm just creating lessons through, uh, you know, the online screencastify stuff. Or some days I'm just on there, um, you know, responding to emails or questions. I, I give the kids a question that has nothing to do with class every day. Um, some of it's like, you know, what is the, you know, the thing that worries you the most? And so I kind of respond back to each kid so they can kind of have that conversation. Yeah. Um, but then as soon as class time's over, I'm playing with the kids or doing one of the now, you know, 30 projects that we have lined up to do, repaint the swing set. So um, I think I've done more work now that I've been in lockdown than I did before. So yeah, I think a lot of people can feel the same thing. You know, you, 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 you don't realize how easy it comes sometimes when you're have the convenience of leaving and kind of going through your day. And now when you're inside for, for so for you know, relatively inside and uh, you've got to, you know, especially for teachers and stuff, you're creating a lot of new original um, transferable content to students, mm -hmm. you know, than you would in a classroom. So it's yeah. a little different. Keeping them engaged. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, you got to realize that we're all in an odd boat here. And so it's not about, that 99%, I got to get that 90%. Now it's engagement. It's like, don't just give them a busy work thing to do. Make them feel like there's there's something, some good reason why they're doing it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah right. Challenge them to actually complete the work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Well, um, have you been teaching in touch with some of your athletes? Um, you know, how are they holding up during these times? Yeah, so uh, I actually just had a, a meeting with my high school players uh, at Sycamore High School at the captains. Um, last couple of weeks, we've really been trying to figure out what the needs are from the students' perspective, the players' perspective, because there was so much thrown at them originally, like school, parents, um, you know, USA, Mary, like it's all just kind of piling on. I'm like, okay, let's take a step back. What do we want to do? Um, and so the captains and myself and my other coach um, are kind of developing a three-tier system um, where, and the fun part is that we pr to promote them. So we're the aviators at Sycamore. And so um, after so many of the events that you do, so many workouts or so many video analysis or so many rule, we're actually quizzing the kids on the rule book. Um, they can get promoted to a different level. So from like airman to airman uh, to, you know, to sergeant to lieutenant. So we have a whole system of breakdown as they fill in the stuff they can, increase levels right. um, and the kids seem to really like that and so I talked with my other coaches for the Marlins and was like hey is this something that we could do with them would they like that and so we're now figuring out how to shift that to the club side where you know some kids have a high level of understanding already and some kids are brand new um, and so trying to figure out that level of things is kind of that next balance that I'm doing with them we're holding a a video meeting next Wednesday for parents and kids just to kind of talk through, here's what we're going to do. Here's the hopes that we can get back in the pool. If not, here's how we're going to teach you how to play water polo without actually getting in the pool. Right. And actually, well, yeah, yeah, videos like, are going to help a lot on that yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's good. I, I actually just saw a, I just saw a really good, and this just kind of off the top of my head is I, that I saw a video on uh, the, the, what is that video? The academy, the Barcelona Water Polo Academy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen that one, but they're in this pool that's um, uh, they, they, it's like a diving, you know, in a diving tank where you can video and they um, it's basically it's a it's almost like a clear, so you can get an underwater shots of just leg movement. It was just mm -hmm. tremendous, and I was like, yeah, that that's some that is some really good footage, you know, if yeah. you want to really break down. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but I'll but you can look for it. Um, but but that's something maybe you want to start with for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause I have a, a whole like manual of, okay, here's how to tread. And we have things from like uh, aquatics Academy or aquatics, which aquatics or something. I, it was like from a couple years ago from out in California or the, you know, the tip of the days and stuff like that. So I kind of broke those down by the skill level. And so we give those kids, okay, let's watch these three here. And then we'll talk about how we do that. I use that for my brand new kids at high school. And I use that for, uh, the club stuff too yeah yeah that's great yeah right there are there are a ton of resources out there whether it's cap seven uh cwpa american water polo tips of the week 
uh, U.S. Water Polo has been doing some some things out there. So it's it's certainly uh, the resources are, are abundant uh, right now. Yeah, I, I was just worried that kids are get overwhelmed. Like, here's all the stuff I have to do, all of it, and it's like, <laughs> no, right. it's okay. Like, to yeah, do, um, do a little bit. You don't have to do, try to do everything. And I think and teachers are the same way. They, I think, I had 30 emails from different companies in the first week of use this electronically, do that, and I was like, okay, let's just take a step back. Right. Let's see. Let's see what works. Right. Yeah. Um. So you said you've been. Um, you know, you obviously you 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 were all remotely here. What what's something you're looking forward to the most when you can, you know, finally get back on the deck with with your athletes? Um, getting them in the pool. Like I know they are itching to do that, um, and just throw the ball around. And I'm I'm itching to get back in the pool. I I play on a master team, and like just not being able to get in the pool, I can tell that they are doing that. So just getting them and getting the new faces in. I think is going to be good. I, I know that the, the club players that we talked to in the, in the winter were really excited about the spring stuff. Um, and, and so I know they've been doing that. So I just can't wait to get this new group of kids that I've not worked a whole lot with to kind of see this new angle. And I think that's the best part is, you know, I love teaching high level stuff, but those new kids, it's fun to watch as soon as they learn a skill, like it clicks and then their face lights up and it just, that's one of the best feelings is when, everything comes together and, and just works out right. Cause they're excited and you're excited and it, it makes all that time you guys put in, you know, worth it. Yeah. 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 Right. Just be being back in the pool and working with athletes. I think that's something that, you know, we can all really appreciate. Yeah. So uh, one last question before I let you go. Um, do you have any, um, do you have any like good book recommendations for an athlete that might be out there looking to, um, you know, step away from the, step away from the computer or, um, you know, maybe so, kill, kill some time. If they want to, if you want to go sports route um, and, and kind of see what goes through the mind of good coaching um, is, is a book called Three Nights in August. Now, granted, if you're an anti-Cardinal fan, you may hate it, <laughs> but it, it does go through um, the, the coaching perspective of Tony La Russa during a Cub series uh, from the dugout. So really just kind of, you know, what goes on, the emotion, how they, they do that, and just kind of looking through the eyes of a coach. Okay. Now, me being a history nerd, I am I'm all about, I try to read like a book that involves the content we're in. So I've been diving into The Billion Dollar Spy. It's a Cold War um, book about how the United States uh, got a hold of this guy and just gave us all sorts of really crazy technology. And it's just interesting to see how we ran that, that spy ring. Um, and I'm listen to a podcast uh, while I work outside uh, it, about the same thing. And it, it just talking about just the different levels of things. So I, you know, what I would say to any student is pick a topic that you're interested in. And there's a ton of good books out there to get away from the computer, get off your phone, you know, go find a spot outside in the sun and, and read for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's great advice, right? Like, you know, this day and age, you know, not only are athletes and, and, and kids on screens, to begin with now it's doubling down right we're, we're you know most of them are learning you know by just like this like you and i talking right with their teachers so they're on their screens that that much more and it's that much more important to, to step away and, and, and open a good book right yeah go dust off your bike I, go, go you find go. a bike in the garage and go for a bike ride around the neighborhood i know i know i was just saying that to my wife the other day i was like we need to get a bike I, I, we don't have bikes. We ride, we walk, we walk a lot and stuff. I was like, we need, we need to get a bike. Yeah, we got, we just got a new bike delivered for my twins. Uh, we got, I got my bike out and, and, you know, we've been riding bikes daily just to burn off some pent up energy. Great, great. Good for you. Excellent. Well, this has been Nick Helwig from uh, Cincinnati Marlins. I, I really appreciate the time. It, it's been, it's been really, um, Really very insightful. And uh, this is Damon Newman from American Water Polo. Uh, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and our website, AmericanWaterPolo.org. Remember, it's important to stay connected to what's important to you.